Alright, uh, I'm RJ, also known as the uh, the most useless member of any band, the bass player. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa, buddy, you're thinking keyboardist. Hey. Is Glenn Fricker the keyboardist? The keytar. <laughs> the keytar. <laughs> the keytar hey, right? hey, don't miss the keytar, man. I've seen some amazing keytars. Yeah, it's the dude from Dragon Force. Paper Tiger, or Pet Tigers. You, what's the op? She rocks the keytar. You'll just be like, wow. Anyway. <laughs> With the headband. <laughs> but you play bass. Anyway. All four strings? Yeah, all four. All four. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including these guys and me. I'm Josh, and today my guests formed their band in January of 2017 with their first show happening three months later. Known for fast and melodic skate punk, they were self-described as a super group of stand-up guys and musicians. Um, their new single, Sunday Driver, released last May of 2021. And uh, that's almost one year to the day from their release of the Hole of Holes in Desert, their second EP, which was engineered and mastered by Cody Levitt, with a tagline that says, "We're fast, keep up." Please welcome to the channel, Call Shot. Welcome to the channel, guys. Hey guys, well, thank Thanks you for having us. us. Say hi. Yep. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Uh, first, Hello. official welcome. Official. All right. I like it. Clink. Cheers, guys. Clink. I want to note that this Hello. is under duress. Boys. Clink. The bartenders. Mm. Wow, that's that's fantastic. Holy shit. It's even better when you don't just do a shot of it. Oh, it's so warm inside. <sighs> Sexton Whiskey, was that right? That was it. Sexton Whiskey. Made my nipples hard. Really Sponsor me. Alright. Mm -hmm. It was really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I never did it as a shot, so thanks for that. Now, uh, you're the bartender, right? Um, kind of like a... Uh, no, I mean as a job, which one of you was oh, a bartender. bartender. That that's right. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> like your bartender duty, right? You're closer. <laughs> that's why I'm the same. I got you. All right. Now then, like uh, Scotch for anybody watching this video that doesn't know who Call Shot is, thank you very much. Subscribe while you're at it. Go ahead and tell them who you are and what you do in the band and who we're missing. Okay. Well, uh, how are we doing this? Hey, guys. I'm Christian Salas. Uh, I am vocals for Call Shot. We'll go there. Yeah. You, you, you're good. <laughs> that's what that means. Swallow, so dude. I'm you Gabe. Swallow. You're good at that. I'm it's Gabe. East I LA play Gabe. East LA Gabe. Um, I'm only on Instagram. You know, quick, quick little note. They made me get an Instagram. So I even got that like <laughs> against my will. I couldn't even find you on that. No, because they're like, oh, you got, you got to stop texting me for like all this band shit. I'm like, all right. <laughs> but anyway, Gabe, yes, I uh, play guitar, and um, yeah, we write all the music together, but yeah, I usually write the majority of it, and then it becomes yeah. call shot when we all uh, play together, mm -hmm. so yeah. Alright, uh, I'm RJ, also known as the uh, the most useless member of any band, the bass player. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa, buddy, you're thinking keyboardist. Hey. Is Glenn Fricker the keytar? The keytar. <laughs> the keytar. The keytar hey, right? hey, don't miss the keytar, man. I've seen some amazing keytars. Yeah, it's the dude from Dragon Force. Paper Tiger, or Pet Tigers. You, what's the op? She rocks the keytar. You'll just be like, wow. Anyway. With the headband. <laughs> but you play bass. Anyway. All four strings? Yeah, all four. All four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I only laugh because I have a bass upstairs I've touched three times in my life. So. <laughs> all right, so right off the bat, I just want to um, – oh, we're missing Travis. Yeah, yeah, so we are a four-piece band, but Travis couldn't be here tonight um, doing stuff with band. He plays so. drums. Yeah, by the way, he, he plays, plays drums. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys already figured that out. So. Yes. Um, now, we won't be uh, seeing a, a performance from you today, but we will be seeing a uh, music video? Music yeah. video, yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome sauce. Stick around for the end of that uh, the, the interview. We'll tack it on there. And uh, by all means, throw some comments down below. Let us know what you think. Please. I want to start off, why the name? Why Call Shop? Uh, I just I remember that specific time. We were brainstorming just random names. Um, at first, it was Bareface. Which I was not a fan of. B E A R. That's right. Bear as in the animal. <laughs> okay. Face. There's a band Bear Tooth, right? There's a Bear yes, Tooth. And that's and they're the amazing. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're great. these yeah, they're are orange amps. Bear Tooth. Right. And there's some other. Um, I wrestled a bear once. Things like that. So I just wanted. I was more <laughs> against Bear Face. I remember that name specifically. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. You personally wrestled a bear once? 
Well, the, well, the band. The band. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I the way you said it, I was like, awesome whoa, 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 band, wait a female vocalist, you, whatnot. Or... You could be the, the pretty. No, so like, I, know you, I know you have a history of like martial arts and sports and stuff. So martial arts? Like, no. I'm not an ass kicker. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you have to study martial arts? Oh, he's probably the softest one here. Yeah. Travis <laughs> is doing jujitsu. Yeah, he's doing yeah. jujitsu right now. Okay, sorry. But that's why I was like, did you really wrestle up here? I mean, I would if I was scared to. If my life was on the line. Right on. Anyway, so why call shot? Um, so we did have another former member part of, uh, call shot. He's obviously not in the band anymore, but he's the one that was brainstorming all the, uh, the band names, the ideas. Um, I, I just had to put my foot down on the bare face only because it's just, you hear it a lot. So it's just wanted something unique. And then I think he even came up with call shot. He did. Um, he did. I'm pretty sure. Him. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And it just clicked. It just sounded right for And it looks cool on a flyer too. It's just <laughs> kind of a simple I like the thing. Yeah, I like how you have the reticle there for the, the yeah, uh, and it's oh, it's eye. very yeah. it looks great on a flyer. You could swear you've almost seen it on a flyer before, or heard the name and you haven't. So yeah, it's wow. kind of it's it's very. I mean, for lack of better words, comfortable. It's familiar. Yeah. There you go. Marketing. So um, it's, it, it's comfortable, but completely different at the same. It time. It is, yeah, because that's the thing. I'm like I mean, surprised there isn't another it's not even a band thing called that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of it's two words. It's kind of like I, a honestly, I, now. Now. I honestly wasn't going to be surprised if you said oh, we were playing pool and somebody said call shot, call the shot. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's you, get, talk. you give us too much credit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. So let's talk uh, musical influences. Let's just start at the very beginning. What was that first musical influence that you, made you like? I want to do that when I you know grow up, or I want to learn that genre or, or that, a particular artist or something. And it, whoever wants to start. I just realized yeah. I'm going to get drink out of the fridge. All right. Yeah. That's a fantastic question. I'm going to go on and on so someone answers first. That's why I asked. Go ahead, man. AJ? <laughs> man, well, I always grew up Here's what I prepared just for randomly singing, doing musical theater and whatnot, acting, things. I'm from L.A. originally, so it's just something you did while living in L.A. But I always just uh, love to perform and sing and whatnot, but it just got to a point and I just turned 21 and... Um, I joined my first band back in LA then. I didn't even know what punk was when I joined that punk band. So you came I, to, you came to making music late. Yeah. Me too. That yeah. is late. Yeah, I didn't even late. know, put it this way, when I joined that my first punk band, I didn't even know who AFI and NoFX were. So just being in that band, I was exposed to the culture and the music. Fell in love with it. I'm more on the melodic punk side. I like to sing. Not really scream at all. Zoli from Ignite is one of my uh, influences. Now, wait a minute. Scott Forgive me for interrupting Mar-a-Wah. you yet again, but do it. I've seen the pictures that Tiffany Salerno took of you. Uh-huh. Shout out at, at Half Stop. Half Stop. Half Stop, sorry. You're amazing, Tiffany. <laughs> yeah, uh, Tiffany and and you were, awesome. you were, your veins are popping in your neck on that shot. Well, I'm hitting some high notes, but I'm not screaming. Okay, <laughs> cool, cool. It's, it's no, no. From, it's from I have head. a shot of myself like that where I look like Dave Grohl or something. And I'm yeah. like, it was a ballad. <laughs> yeah, I can't scream. <laughs> Don't growl. I mean, it's really hard to do anyways, but yeah, I just came late in the game in, in that sense, but um, that's kind of where it all started for me. So I came late in punk, not knowing anything about it, joined a punk band, was exposed to it. I learned a lot and it just led me to where I'm at today with you boys in Kalsha. Noise. Next! Um, so my story, I guess, uh, I don't know, high school, I was, uh, I was really into like the, the hardcore punk scene and... Uh, and then, then I started getting into more of the more melodic stuff, like you know, Fat Records and uh, Authority Zero is a big one for me. Oh, yeah. um, but you know, I, I got my hands on a guitar when I was when I was sixteen, and a month later, uh, a buddy of mine was like, "Hey, I've been playing the guitar. You have a guitar. You want to play bass?" That is sure. <laughs> fuck it. Why the fuck not? I but, can't uh, tell you how many times. <laughs> hard. It's four I strings. I can't tell you how many times a bass player. In a band has been standing here and saying, "Well, no one else was playing it, or you know, yeah." They didn't. Well, yeah, it was exactly. I had zero experience with it, G- guitar, bass, otherwise. Right. at that point, so it was. I was like, "Yeah, fuck it, I'll play. I got nothing better to do." Right. And so, and it was just kind of like, kind of fell into it. I never had that stage of <laughs> you sat around in my so bedroom and yeah. and just like I'm going to play Bad Religion all day. I never had that <laughs> stage. I went from here's a guitar to write some shit. Right. <laughs> By the way, we have gigs. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, the nice thing about learning, if starting out learning bass, though, is that it's really easy to pick it up in a song. Sure. Like, you, there isn't any, like, you know, oh, well, he's doing, like, a, a major seventh augmented, you know, some weird sure. chord. It's, it's you know, it's a driving bass line, generally. So, uh, I can totally understand that. 
I can't even fathom trying to pick up guitar without any sort of musical knowledge in the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yet, I, I say that because I grew up playing <laughs> piano and then switched to I guitar. Did, yeah. 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 And then I realized, oh, I can just sing. Singing. Just oh, it was good. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Uh, anybody else have early, earliest musical influence? So, for me, it was... I'm quite, sorry, were you done? No, no, yeah. Okay. That's good. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, he's just a bass player. Yeah, he's done. So, wow! <laughs> <laughs> again, Glenn Fricker, if you're watching this, SMG Studios. Because um, he hates bass players. Um, <laughs> he's great. Um, he's great. Um, so... For me, it was classic rock, like, born and raised on, like, you know, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, Hendrix, you know, all the, like, the classic greats. But the thing of it is, you know, and my primary instrument's always been guitar, you know, a little piano, a little bass, drums, whatever, but guitar's been the primary. With classic rock, it was always unobtainable, getting to that status, right? Getting to that, like, level of skill or whatever. The guitar god. The thing. guitar god thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. My first real favorite band was ACDC, right? But then I got into Nirvana, then I got into punk, and all of a sudden playing guitar and creating music was feasible. And that's not to say that punk bands are any less skilled or whatever. If anything, you can make the argument that playing something so simple, it's actually like way harder to write music. You know, you can't hide behind the skill or, or, or being virtuous or whatever. So it was initially classic rock, but then, yeah, like I remember learning some kind of hate by the Misfits and learning that solo, that then and then I'm like, solo. and then, yeah, exactly. And then all of a sudden it felt like, oh, I can do this too. You know what I mean? So it was yeah. like punk rock kind of, that's why I love punk rock. I write in punk rock. We write in punk rock, right? It's mm-hmm. it's like, it's ours. And now that I've become a mediocre at best guitar player, oh, now, I can, play, <laughs> now I can play, now I can play the, the classic rock stuff. So modest. But, you know, it's, it's definitely kind of like this reverse thing. But yeah, classic rock and then definitely the punk rock. But even some of our songs is very classic rock. How many influence. times have you had that moment of, wait, that's it? When you're learning a classic so rock let song. So let me fucking tell you something, man. <laughs> all right? All right. Spill the tea. Spill because, the tea. So let me tell you something. <laughs> so, you know, I actually started working on my rig. I bought my first two bag recently. It's an orange and whatever. It, oh, it's it's beautiful. Different. It's way different. It's like it's playing beautiful. in high definition. I can no longer hide in like the yes, distortion of a exactly. solid state. It's like, oh shit, I actually have to really play this hard. So anyway, long story short, I bought a $300 whammy pedal. So that's what Tom Morello uses. Whammy! Wait a minute. Yeah, it's a, it's the Digitech whammy pedal, but he uses the one without like the octave extension and harmonizer. I bought the one with the octave extension and harmonizer because it's like, why not? And, and I mean, he's one of my favorite. He's another influence. Like, I mean, I even, I even used to play my guitar all stupid high like Tom Morello. <laughs> yeah, like, 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 like ridiculous. But I bought that pedal anyway. All the great ones do it. I, I, I started using the whammy pedal and I learned how to play like, uh, the first solo with the whammy pedal, I learned the audio slave, like a stone. Mm. It's actually an easy solo, you know? So it was like, Oh, that's it. You know, to answer your question, I was like, that's it. So I don't, now it's like, is Tom Morello a genius or a hack? I don't know. No, no. He's a genius. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He's the best. He's, he realized, wait, I have resources to use. Absolutely. That make this sound better. Without me having to try to be like a, a speed metal god or, or sure. you know, or and Joe, he can do Joe that. Sastriani. He can. He can absolutely do that. But he like, plays what the song needs. 100%. And I think also he makes the song need what he plays. And what that was mean? the great thing about punk rock. It's like they're playing, you know, more, more bare bones stuff, but it's like right. they're playing it their own way. And then all of a sudden it was just like, okay, cool. It's like... Give the keys, give the keys to the lunatics. You know, well, whatever. The, this, thing with, the, the thing with punk rock, or the, thing the is. thing with punk rock, is you're never going to hear like a five minute guitar solo in punk rock. No, <laughs> people will get bored really quick. Yeah, a hundred percent. But there are some. At the same time, it's weird when you hear like El Heffer from No Effects, a huge influence yeah. for me. He does this like amazingly blues. To me, in my mind, like he plays some stuff that like David Gilmour plays. It's like this kind of like the double bend. Yeah, it's like this double bend. It's kind of whimsical, but kind of like you know melancholic or whatever. And it's like oh, I know where you got that from. See, <laughs> I've always enjoyed when uh, a musician or a band makes their bones. They they get famous. They get known for a thing, and mm-hmm. then they're like, "Hey, by the way, we also do this." Here's us, you know, like Metallica is an example. Sure. They're like, yeah. hey, here's Kirk K- or here's a uh, uh, James Hetfield doing some acoustic. Yeah. Because. Fuck it. <laughs> Why the fuck not? Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, it's not like they're going to lose fans over it or or lose their credibility. Cutting their hair, on the other hand. Yeah. Anyway. 
For the record, I liked Saint Anger. I'm just gonna throw that controversial yes. point. Trash Pandora. Right. I lo- I actually liked Saint Anger. Saint um, Anger's. But S and M. Yeah. No, c- you didn't like S and M. I don't know. I've only heard it the one time. But I was too young to really appreciate right. it. I'm That's about to date myself here. I yeah. remember. I remember that which matters most. When Metallica, S and M came out. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's Metallica playing with a Old. symphony. San Francisco sent them, mm-hmm. I believe. Amazingly. And I remember standing in a Tower Records. Anybody, do you remember Tower Records? Yeah. yeah I, <laughs> I used to go there in Hollywood. <laughs> they had a listening station, which by itself yeah, was a rare thing. Yeah. And I, I was standing there just listening to it. And I, I li- literally, they let me just stand there and listen to the whole album. Yeah. And I'm smiling, just like a lunatic the whole time. And that was actually one of the very first times where I, I listened to something and I wanted, I, I had to buy it. I had to buy it, and I bought it. No, mm-hmm. actually, I think a girlfriend gave it to me. <laughs> anyway, I digress. So, we've talked about earliest musical influences. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about who's currently making, you know, getting you jazzed when you are either wanting to start writing music or just want to feel, you know, this is why I do this. Who are you currently listening to? What's your current musical influences besides Call Shot? Besides ourselves. Yes, I had. To, I have to unfortunately <laughs> say that. You're um, on the promotion game. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's just... you too, baby. <laughs> you ain't. I don't know. It just really for me it comes to the '90s skate punk. Uh, I listened to a lot of Unreal Live. Just saw Scott play an acoustic performance. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. I was there. I was there. at Triple B. I was there. I was there. <laughs> I was actually there. At, and how ballsy was it? Uh, sorry, tangent. How ballsy was it for um, what's his name from? The Phoenix X? No, no, no. The, Buck 09? Yes. What a, what a name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He just, uh, oh. He, he said, up and started to play some he songs brought members of his band, before. and he just basically was like, you know what? I've been writing a lot of solo folksy stuff. I'm going to yeah. get up in front of this punk crowd and just play it. And he, and he kept it. It, it worked. Well, it was good. It was like stuff he's never played. Like, this is what I write yeah. behind yeah, I mean, the scenes. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm going to play it for you guys. And he did. I mean, good for him. it was fantastic. Good for him. But, yeah. It, good and for it, you. Oh, what's his name? What's his name? Oh, what is his name? Buck 09 singer. Hey. No, I thought he was. I'm awful with names. No, I don't even look at from Bug Nine. Yes, I'm so sorry. I forgot your name at the moment. He probably won't. Yeah, yeah. He, no, <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked. We had a moment. Anyway, um, but yeah, I was at that show, and uh, Scotty Dub actually uh, opened. I think I missed that. But um, no, he's. I was just getting there. Uh, it, was, it was a great show. Anyway, you were saying. <laughs> I'm uh, no, yeah. Um, I listen to a lot of Unwritten Law. I have ever since, uh, you know, the, the Black Album and Elva. I'm a big fan of that one, too. Um, I'm just a big sucker for fast, melodic punk. Sure. That's it. Sure. For, the, for those hooks, something that I like to sing to, really gets people moving, the bridges, the choruses, or whatnot. So I'm a big fan of that. I'm a big fan of Strung Out, too. Hit the switch, uh, too. You got me into oh, yeah. them. Fucking I forgot to hit the switch. switch. They're oh amazing, God. too. Oh Actually, God. at that show, I saw more than one Strung Out shirt. Were you wearing a Strung Out shirt? I was not. Okay. I was wearing a Call Shot shirt. Um, of course you were. <laughs> so those marketing. I just go back to the nineties and even like even to today's like a day to remember. I think they're a fantastic band. What they write, yeah, they're, they're, those guys are brilliant. Fucking love the day to remember. And uh, I just listen to that. I just think of all these random bands. Zoli has always been an influence of mine from Ignite. He's an uh, amazing singer. I'm just you know sad that he he left the band, but he left for his reasons. Um, I'm just all over the place. That's it. And I always just kind of brainstorm as to what I want to sing about, what I'm currently feeling, topics. I'm I'm just all over the place. I'm, I don't know if I really have a system. He writes some music, and I listen to it. I start writing lyrics, just note taking, kind of like back in college. And just when I put something together, it just all it just all kind of clicks. I don't I don't really know if I can if I'm explaining it right or if it's oh, sounding right. Yeah, but I'll pick it up what you're putting down. Yeah. So as so as someone else, as a singer songwriter myself, I I get what you're saying. Like you tend to listen to bands where you like the words or you like the singer. Or, yeah, or that. I can hear the words like bad religion, like right. things so clearly, things like that. It's so funny because I'm the polar opposite. <laughs> Bring it. What do you but, got? What's he saying? But you know what? Like, and that's what I appreciate. But appreciate about you, you're always able to write lyrics and sing in a way that matches what I'm writing. It's not that it's not important. Obviously, it's important, and I would say that you're probably the big reason why we're able to like hit more people because it's yeah it's punk but you know how to sing you know i hate giving them compliments but it's the truth <laughs> i mean the objective real reality is this guy knows how to sing so it's like um you know i write the music uh first i mean as far as influences go definitely yeah it's the same thing i mean if you had to like 
pinpoint our sound, it really is 90s Epitaph, right? I mean, like, mm-hmm. if you had to... But, I mean, I love everything. I mean, obviously, classic rock's a huge one. I mean, we have a song, Jennifer, off of Holes in the Desert, our EP that was released. Jennifer with, with one N. Link, with Jennifer with one N. Link, link below. down below. So that's, ac- <laughs> that's actually a Joe Walsh song, okay? <laughs> so that's actually, I was listening to Joe Walsh, and I was listening to Zeppelin's No Quarter, and there was something about the dire feeling. Like, it just, you listen to them, they're very slow songs. They're not, like, crazy fast at all but it was just like this this it gives you this feeling of like oh there is something on the line so i wrote a song like that so yeah joe walsh is awesome uh classic rock definitely always gets me out of the mood but some classical music video game soundtracks it's really a hodgepodge of stuff i did mm-hmm. want to mention by the way going back to snm really quick going back a little <laughs> what, what they call it callback right so what it is? No, so no, back no, no, call, call shot. shot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> call shot. But I fucked it up. Yeah, right. So you're out of the band. So S and M Airlines. So the guy who did the keys on Black Album, right? So he did all the symphonic parts for the Black Album. Mm-hmm. He was the guy who did the orchestration. Yeah, it's the same guy. So what happens is, so he does all these awesome parts for the Black Album, right? And of course, Metallica, being the drunk awesome people they are, never call them back. They use the parts on the album, never call them back. They call them back eight years. Hey, do you want to like help us out by leading an orchestra? Michael, right? Michael, somebody. I, f- I forget his name. He had like this cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw the video. Yeah, was... it's a, but yeah, that's I mean, the dude who did the key parts the and all the orchestration parts on uh, on uh, the black. Really? Album. Yep. Well, swear to God. And I bet he's glad he did. Uh, yeah, he was just like, <laughs> no, he was like, what the fuck? I haven't heard you from you guys in eight years. <laughs> like, <laughs> We're millionaires now. Like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> this is odd. But, yeah. I wonder if he quoted them a price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, shit. fuckers! It'll cost you. you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Eight years, a million worth of, a song. <laughs> yeah, eight years worth of interest. You fucks. How about you? Um, probably a bit anticlimactic compared to these two guys, but uh, lately I've been listening a lot to uh, a lot of new releases, like uh, like uh, the Deviants. Oh, the band's just Deviates. just put out a new album. It's kind of short. It's only about twenty minutes long, but. Just stoked to see something new from them, and wow. that's, that's pretty badass. And uh, when was their last album? Shit, a while back. Two thousands. Something. Like that. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna. Right, I'm, not gonna I'm not gonna go on record and throw yeah. a number out there, but two thousand six. Yeah, yeah. It's Twenty been, years. It's been, that it's been a while. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that new one from Face to Face, that new album. I was oh, really hoping yeah. you're gonna mention that. Yeah, Face to Face. Dude, there's some badass bass lines. Oh, it makes me feel. A little bit happy inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they did a great job on that. Good job, Faces. Yeah. One of the things I like about doing this sh- this show, this channel, is that people send me stuff to review. Hint, hint. And um, I I used to hunt out new music, and now it finds me. That's awesome. Like it's for you. it forces it's me. I I force myself to listen to all the parts and listen to like think about okay as a songwriter, think about that music training you had years ago in you know, college when you studied voice, uh, I, I really have to s- step back and think as more like a music critic than as a singer or as, what do I want to listen to when I work out or something like that? Yeah, sure. But What's I'm really... Goal? But also, yeah. when, I, when I edit these interviews and I ask that question, I just ask, those questions I just asked mm-hmm. you, I hear all these band names I never heard. So I get to be like, dive into them. Yeah. Oh, no. uh, yeah. I, but I no longer listen to music just as a singer or a songwriter or a guy who you know happens to also play guitar, mm. I'm also learning to play drums. So I listen to that, right. and I'm you know and and the bass, and I, it it really like don't don't limit yourself. This is, this one's for the new musicians. Don't limit yourself to just whatever you think you like yeah. because you may discover stuff you never even knew. Sure, that totally does it for you. Um, case in point, until I knew I was going to try to get them on the show, I had never heard Sheiks of Neptune. I had never heard huh. The Sciatics. These guys are great. Mm-hmm. And yep. then I went and saw them live. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Please come on my show. Please come on. And they came on the show. And, and more importantly, gave me CDs to review. And I was like, yes. And I listened to them. I'm like, what have I been doing with my, my music? What have I been doing in the studio? What have I been doing? Like, It's like when you listen to someone like Sting. Or Dolly Parton, who plays like nine instruments in a two-hour show. They're like, what am I doing with myself? Why am I not, you know, doing more? Yeah. And then I remember, oh yeah, I have a day job and a wife and a kid and this. Sure. Oh, life? Yeah. No, yeah, I, life. 
And it's it's funny too because literally I was like dragging ass before work today. I don't know. I was just tired. I had a, did a bunch of shit yesterday. He didn't at, know at night. <laughs> and I was driving home, and of all songs, soup. Um, well, not soup. Super Freak by Rick James came out, mm-hmm. and it like got me so pumped. Like just listening to the bass line, I was like, "Holy yeah. shit!" Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. I was like, absolutely jazzed. It was fantastic. All right, we're gonna take a quick booze break. <laughs> All right. We're back. Cheers, guys. Sloncher. Cheers. Clink. Sriracha. He said yes. Kombucha. Mm. Oh, that is different. I actually like that. Good job, Canada. Yeah. This is Pops Canadian whiskey. And, and, uh, I actually like that. I did a review of that here. And I, I, I didn't shoot it. It's... How is that more powerful than the sextant as a shot? Or, or is that job. just me? Well, job. the sextant had that after that, that scotch after Sex, taste. Which I'm not a big fan of. This is good, though. Uh-oh. This is more... Canada in honor of Smooth. McDonald. That's the way. This is honey. Mm-hmm. It's like honey base. Meanwhile... Uh, I'm so drunk from last night. I just want to let you guys know my eyes are burning. <laughs> it's your face is killing me. Okay. Hey! <laughs> I want to use that for Get him. Just gonna go over here. Get just, <laughs> I'm just Josh and Christian. Uh, uh, Josh and from Josh. Two in a row. Thank you. I'm here all week. Hi. Anyway, uh, by the way, if you want to be on the channel, either reviewed or interviewed, hit me up down below. I've got a link there, email address, or just you know, drop a comment. Uh, love to have you. We'll have some fun. Moving on. Now you're new to Asteroid M Records. I was wondering, you originally were on Hell Arc Records? Heliarch. Heliarch. Mm-hmm. And, uh, out that of Bakersfield, not California. That is pronunciation I got out of that. Okay. <laughs> out of Bakersfield. Yeah. Yep. Hey, I actually, uh, grew up in Victorville. Oh, oh I'm sorry. No shit. I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> could be worse. I could have grown up in Bakersfield. I, I picked up a bagel hey. in Victorville once. <laughs> or yes. Oilsdale. I ate it so much. We got to return it. And that's what's yeah. my favorite subject. Oh, <laughs> anyway. So I was wondering, how did the Heliarch uh, come in there? You guys are, I mean, you started in Vegas, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're Vegas based. So how did Bakersfield or Bakersfield Record Label get in? in to the mix, so to speak. Yeah, it was through the former band member. They were friends, and uh-huh. this guy wanted to start his own record label, Heliarch, after like his grandfather, Heliarch Weldon. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Weldon company. Yeah, so right. I think we were the first band he wanted. Uh, he wanted first, and we just started. We just started that relationship through the former band member. He's the one that set it all up. Uh, they were great, very supportive. Um, yeah. I think it lasted for like a year, a year and a half. Uh, yeah, that was it before. Um, it's okay. They're not on the record anymore. <laughs> yes, you know, yeah, it was, uh, it was cool. It was it was, it was very cool, very supportive, very uh, <laughs> very very uh, band family. You know, yeah, yeah very, very tight, very, 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 very cool, very tight. Wade uh, Orchestra, other yes. great bands yeah. on there. The Withdrawals, um, we're all friends today. We just saw them. Oh, Wade Orchestra we all had a show. Since, Keep since going. I, I, the dog wants me. Um, but yeah, uh, short lived. It, it just flew by really quick. But yeah, we we made a lot of great connections and friends uh, sure. through that whole experience. And then now we're on an affiliate with uh, Asteroid M Records, uh, which is out here. here. Yeah, yep, here in Vegas. Yes, by Cody Levitt, who's also our producer. He's, he just he does magic in the studio. Where are you? Cody's going? amazing, and Asteroid M Records as a well. Where are you going? <laughs> You're off your mark, man. It's okay. Stay in your tile. He said specific Stay in your tiles. <laughs> he said specific tiles. I should can't co- I move. Should color the t- no. At least some painters so, tape or something, you know. <laughs> okay, so um, with, I don't want to start a, a label war or anything, so I won't ask the the question of why did you go to Asteroid M. No, ask. But why not? Yeah. Why did you go to Asteroid M Records? Uh, we were what? recording our EP Holes in the Desert with Asteroid M. Mm-hmm. We weren't on the label yet, but he just started hinting through the whole recording process about, hey, you know, when we're done, I want to talk about you guys being on the label. Uh, he likes our sound, he likes our, our band, the music, everything about it. And once we finished the EP, it just became official. We're on Asteroid yeah. M Records, and he does great. He has like 15 bands. It's it's yeah. growing rapidly. It does great work. Cody Levin is a genius. We love working with him. And uh, what do we do? I don't know how to pick your yeah, you mind me. You, so, um, you got it. You, got, you just got lucky there. And that's what happened, especially because he does great. He's a professional. He's great at what he does. Sure. He makes the sound fantastic. That's what we want. And he's a great support system. He truly believes in us as much as we believe in him. 
and uh, it's just it's just going fantastic. And we have a lot of ideas right now, still just moving forward. So we love the relationship. With yeah, Cody. that's right. And yeah. and I will say, I mean, everything with Healy Arc, I think he he ended it too. Like a, he yeah. didn't want to pursue oh, yeah. him. We ended cool with Healy Arc. I mean, still huh? all of them are great dudes, great guys. I mean, even, our last show. Yeah, even when we saw them, when we our last show. That we played right pre-COVID. February 2020 was our last Yep, show. February of 2020, and we met up with the everyone from Heliarch and we're all Santa Cruz Valley. That's where the show was. And yeah. They were there. Yeah. yeah, and so yeah, it was just one of those things that didn't work out, but we're all on good terms. Still love those guys. Um, yeah, and it is kind of cool with the whole Asteroid M. Like, he's very much Vegas. We are out here. We are trying to make it crack here. Yeah. And, and Cody's a genius. Yeah. It's, it's cool to see eye to eye with someone when recording and it's like hey i want to do this this and that this is the sound i'm going for i want this tone out of the guitar and then he knows exactly yeah. like okay yeah i know i know what you need to do there so it's it's very yeah. easy to record with him mm -hmm. yeah, it, it really is and it, it, he pushes us to 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 get better and to evolve True, as yeah. well but but at the same time, it's it's actually very cool watching him evolve and mm -hmm. and get better yeah. his craft as well. Yeah, that's a, I that's to a say fantastic that too. We're watching point, yeah. him grow as well, and he's just getting better at his craft. Yeah, better and better. Because I'm so happy with our EP, Holes in the Desert. Fucking the, out, now. Like, <laughs> out now. We recorded it, and then COVID <laughs> happened, right? But Holes in the Desert, that's our first full EP with Cody. It's pretty badass. But it's, I mean, I'm very proud of that. We're on Spotify. We've got a bunch of listens. Everyone did a great. Hey, so Spotify. continue yeah. to add to the to that listen count. But then, yeah, to your point, you know, like the holes in the desert and then what, what Asteroid M and what Cody has done on just our single, Sunday Driver. You see what I did there? It, it's like such a great full sound. Yeah. yeah. And that's not to say holes in the, I mean, I love the way holes in the desert sounds, right? Yeah. But like he captured it. Sunday Driver is just that much better. And really it's just a lot more bottom end. A what I miss. A little chit chat here and there. This is our Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, W. C. Fields once said, never work with animals <laughs> or children. They'll steal the scene every time. Sorry, I had to, my dog decided to be a total diva and was just like, pay attention to me. So I had to... Eat your Snickers! Well, that was the thing. You had, to chase, you had to chase the animals out, and then you left the children standing here in front of the so, camera. I hope that, <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed whatever the hell they just said. Imagine we just threw your channel. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we're being held hostage right. here. Um, Save us now. Was I, did I come in at a good stopping point? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I'm Great, because I have a... Another thing. Here we go. Never stop. He's feeling it. Where do we go? From First of all, here? is it holes in desert or holes in the desert? Holes in, in the, the desert. desert. That's all. I thought that okay, was weird. It's all me. So I, holes in the yeah. desert is from Scorsese's Casino. Yes. And, and I thought it was appropriate for yeah. us being. It's two things, right? Hey, I'm just a Scorsese nerd, right? Mm -hmm. Nerd. Um, I wouldn't say cinephile, but I just I love Scorsese. And Holes in the Desert, I thought it was appropriate because it was our first EP coming out with like a new drummer, a new project, so to speak. Well, not a new project, but with a new drummer, right? Right. It was um, Travis, we miss you. And I thought it was cool. It was, a pro it was apropos for the situation. Holes in the Desert, us <laughs> coming back. Um, and yeah, so I I, dis I thought it fit the like album. Like I drew up the album art. I sent it to uh, Walid Ashti, who, who drew that for us in three days. This man... Came out with that um album cover and it came out great. That's impressive, so, actually. Yeah, three days. You like and it. I mean, too very, bad. very reasonably priced. And I mean, he knocked it out of the park. So Walid Ashley yeah, is the guy who actually completed yeah. and brought you know our ideas to life. So that's favorite. Can you pass the sex? Jim? Yeah. All right. So can you pass the sex? Wait, are we doing another one? I think that's. Oh yeah, sex. we can. I was just talking myself off because I'm, I'm empty. <laughs> Ah. Alright, relax, Tom Morello. <laughs> oh, I missed an opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so, uh, now Holes in the Desert mm -hmm. has been called a definite step up from the self titled EP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah. Quality wasn't. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's all it is. <laughs> Aside from different production and uh, more melodic range, what else changed for you on that EP uh, and your new single? That's done. Yeah. Mm, I'd, I'd like to say that um, 
I, I think we we as a band had evolved a good bit mm-hmm. beyond just the first one. I think we kind of um, we we didn't rush into it, you know. I think uh, we we yeah. had a bunch of songs and we're like, hey, you know what? Let's get this yeah, thing going. For sure. So there wasn't a was there now you. Holes in the Desert was on Heliar, or no? no that's not no, actually. that's not actually okay. Was there any pressure from the labels? Like, okay, well, you're on the label now. Let's mm-hmm. get a record. No, no, not surprisingly, no, no, no absolutely not. not. We go and record Cody. when we're ready. Actually, we just give no. Him even a even even with Heliar, okay, there was never any kind of pressure like that. Yeah, no, that's amazing, actually. No, yeah, it's damn. We've always worked fast. I just realized that we no, no, we do. Yeah, like, once, like, we, yeah. once we have the thing together and that. we know it, and we're like, hey, before the song's even finished. Being written, we're like, hey, this one's going on. Yeah, we got to record. Oh yeah, this one. I love, I yeah. love the ten minute song where you're in ten minutes. You're like, did I just write an entire song? This and I like it. This yeah. is amazing. Yeah, and then you 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 step away and yeah. you come back. And you're like, yeah, this still slaps. All right, cool. Yeah, uh, I I hate the songs that just take as a songwriter. You're like, three weeks later, you're still like. Uh, I got this bridge. Because <laughs> at that point, you're just you're overthinking it and mm-hmm. messing with it too it much. Months. And yeah, have you ever as now, who writes the, the songs generally? You write the music, or yeah, music. and you write the, the lyrics. The lyrics. Mm-hmm. I mean, they both. Have, have you ever had? All of have you ever like put things. two two different songs that you've been working on together because you're just like yeah. they don't the fit with anything have else? You? What? When, two, like two, two different songs? lyrics. Um, like or like, well, I got this bit, and then I got this other bit. Well, yeah, yeah I do because uh, what I do when I have ideas, I get on my phone and I just record all my lyrics and melodies for different songs and it's put them together sometimes for just one song and it just clicks or it just right. one inspires the other one i'm gonna change this no it's gonna fit for this one song you hack fraud yeah <laughs> definitely so um and i guess we're kind of on it i just want to say i'm still about Sunny driver because those are lyrics i wrote 20 years ago uh in an yeah. old band i got permission to do it when he introduced me to the music to this one song it's gonna fit perfect i always loved it and it came out uh, great and better. Uh, Sunday yeah. Driver on Asteroid. Excuse me one second. Do it. Take a quick moment. It's daddy time. What? <laughs> We're back. <laughs> Alright. Last question. You made it. Yay. First of all. Well, not first of all. Sorry. Last question. Let's pretend we're talking to new musicians. Shit. Okay. <laughs> you you were going to say that anyway, no matter what it is. Like 12 year olds? No, like... like <laughs> But that is can be, yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. pretend could be. Let's pretend a new musician comes up to you at the end of the show. I ask this at the end of most of my interviews because I think it's a really good, like, look into who you are as a musician, but also mm-hmm. what you feel would have helped. And someone comes up to you and says, "How do I be like you, <laughs> RJ?" And if someone, what's one piece of advice that you wish someone had told you before you got into? You know, performing. Uh, and don't say change your strings. <laughs> Although that is important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy this microphone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll start off. So it's okay to be you. It's okay to have your own style. Like that is completely fine. Everyone you look up to now, especially if you're in like the learning phase of like whatever instrument it is, whoever you look up to, you look up to them because they have their own style. They didn't do what everyone else did. They touched you. Right? I mean, <laughs> if it's, great. I mean, you want to definitely <laughs> learn the basics. Like, yeah, okay, you want to know how to play a power chord. You want to know how to maybe, you know, like follow along to a song. Timing is always good. Recognizing, you know, um, learning by ear, I guess, is always really good. That's how, I mean, that's how I play. Dude, I don't even know how to read fucking tabs, okay? But I, I just fucking do it. You know why I do it? Because it's like, there's nothing stopping me. So it's okay yeah. to have your own style. But just be diligent about it. Just make sure you're serious about it. And don't do it half-assed. Just just put the time in. If, if you're going to do your own thing, well, it's your own thing. I mean, there's no excuse not to put 100% into it. So it's okay to have your own style. Just take it seriously you know and i mean that's that's pretty freeing when you realize oh i don't have to compete with anyone i don't have to sound like anyone else i could totally sound like myself i mean seriously the 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 i've gotten this compliment three times in my entire life of playing what is it but i swear to god it's someone coming up to me is like you sound like you have your own style and that's like the ultimate compliment not that i shred not that the songs are any good, because most of them are trash, but it's like, hey, 
you have your own style, and that's like the best compliment you could get. So that would be my point. Yeah, my I, I agree with one caveat. Once got it, somebody said, you write music for musicians. And I was like, you're right. That's, I do write. I write music because I'm a musician and I want to enjoy it. And that's, that's, I've literally written songs with people where we never recorded, never practiced it, but we like had the idea, wrote the whole thing, the whole thing came to fruition. And there's just me and that one person, Alex from Boulevard Bullies in IR. Mm. We we worked on this whole song and we both looked at each other. Yeah, no one else is going to like this. Yeah, but we did it. You know what I mean? But we 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 both loved it. We're like, yeah. we this both, sucks, right? This, we're like, we love it, but everyone else is gonna hate this. We're like, okay, we at least did it. So that'd how, be my how about you? Advice. Okay, dog. What? <laughs> Bubba's. No one's dead yet. They're yeah, not right, right, you, don't, you, don't, you don't want to hear from me, man. Did you want some whiskey? Is that what you want, dog? Want the whiskey. <laughs> the whole point was for them to keep you upstairs. I'm so sorry, <laughs> RJ. Um, talk to the young ones. Yeah, fuck talk critics. The yeah, fuck the critics. Seriously, anyone that tells you, "Oh, that sucks," or, 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 "What are you doing?" Shit like that. Fuck them, dude. Can't you're doing. You're doing it. Yeah. You're doing it because you want to do it. Mm-hmm. If you're doing it for any other reason other than because you want to do it, yeah, well, maybe you know, maybe you should just say it. But um, seriously, if it's something you want to do, fucking Stop. do it. And never mind, never mind what anyone else has to say. You're not good enough. Whatever. Are you good enough to yourself? Yeah. No. Yeah. Keep playing. Keep getting better. That's that's all mm-hmm. there is to it. Yep. I can't. I I got nothing to add to that. It, it, it's like you're gonna be your worst critic, to be honest. But if Always. anyone does actually voice anything that agrees <laughs> with the stupid things we tell ourselves, try to remember you're an idiot and they're an idiot. Just make the music that you want to, you know, idiots. listen to. We're all idiots. Yeah, and let me let me just quickly <laughs> let me just quickly add to that too. Also, get over, especially writing. You don't be married no. to all of your ideas, because guess what? Yeah, to their point, some of your, some of your ideas are gonna suck. Complete your ideas, Maybe like trash. like make sure you write it out and make sure you present it. You still have to present your ideas, just like anyone. So, like, for any, like, sitcom, right? A writer has to present their joke or premise or whatever, and it might suck, and they might, you know, reject it, but at least present it. Make sure you, you write the full thing. Make sure you present the full idea. And if it and if it gets rejected or your band doesn't like it or other people don't like it, come up with a new one. Some That's of them okay. will get rejected. Some of them might not work. That's fine. At least you did it. You see what I'm saying? It's so part don't, of the process. Yeah, it, 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 it it's is. part of the process. Yeah, and keep like, swimming, just keep swimming. And don't don't take it personally. It's keep cool. Swimming. Like, you know what I mean? Just make sure you present it and you're good. And, it, and if it gets rejected, who gives a shit? Write, it, write a better one. Good well, for last you. Last but not least, yeah. Christian. Yeah. Yeah. So, I guess what I wish I kind of heard, explore. Explore different genres. For a long time when I was introduced to punk, I was only punk. Um, but in the past years, decade, Currently, right now, jazz, country music influences me to write punk, especially melodic punk as well. Yep. Kind of like our song, We Had a Drinking Song too. I wanted my own drinking song too, just like <laughs> those drunk cowboys. Like every fucking song is a red solo cup and drinking. But, you know, a song that brings everyone together. So I was influenced by country. Explore other genres. Um, your niche, your, your style is going to come together. Um, explore, listen to every instrument when you're listening to bands, something I didn't do for a long time. I was vocalist. I only listen to singers and that helps with the timing too. So you mm-hmm. gotta listen to that bass, uh, hear it again. And then I'll just listen to the drums, hear it again. And then listen to the guitar. That's what I've been doing for a while now, but it didn't start yeah. off like that. Uh, yeah, but you know, don't be bold. Um, take criticism. Your shots are going to get shut down. Um, in my previous band, I wasn't allowed to sing in Spanish. They let me sing in Spanish. I'm fluent. What a bunch of cunt fucking ass. Right? No, I love them. It just wasn't I really... Espanol? It, yeah. 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 First Small. language. I'm, I'm from uh, from LA, Chilean. But <laughs> not that they didn't let me. They let me once. It, it was just pretty... Sh- like, it was shot down pretty quickly. But you want to stand out. You want to be different than the other bands. So aside from, at that time, a lot of people weren't doing it. A lot of punk bands still aren't doing it. So they let me do that. I don't do it as much. I think it's time for me to write a hook or a bridge here with Spanish. But... It's not excessive, but don't be limited. If, if you know, you know, you gotta explore your talent, go as far as you can. Uh, it's hard work, but do it because you love it. We still do. We have our day jobs. It's our therapy. We do it because we love it. Um, 
punk is it's complicated. You're not going to make a lot of money out of it, but do it for your, your passion, <laughs> music the love. In general, that's yeah. why we do it. Um, that, that's it. Right that's on. That's all I got to say. Well said. And let me just say, on top of all of that, that it's just at the end of the day, it's just you versus you. It's just you sure. and whatever you put in. So at the end of the day, if you can say, I. I, I grew as a musician or I, I, you know, I worked on something that made me uncomfortable. That's all part of it. None of us know what the hell we're doing when we get into this. And no, and, and I'm here to tell you any musician that, that you, you think, Oh my God, they're so confident. It's all an act. <laughs> we all are just, we don't mean it. <laughs> we're comp. I don't know about you. Me personally, I always got more nervous after the gig when I had to talk to people. That's my favorite part. About, but <laughs> I hate it. No, because but that's what booze is for. Well, because I wrote music music for musicians, <laughs> I would talk to musicians, and then I'd have to hear from them their honest critiques. I can't wait to jump off stage and just yeah, hear right. Hear the feedback. But stick around. We've got a video from them, and uh, in the meantime, really appreciate you coming by. And uh, if you want to, you know, see more videos like this, please consider subscribing down there. Don't forget to ring the bell. Definitely click the link down below for Call Shot, all their social media things, and uh, check out their new single, which is Sunday Driver yes, on Astro Dam Records. Yeah. Cody, thanks. Bye -bye. In the meantime, we'll see you, uh, I guess, next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. Awesome. Bye. Take it easy. Bye. Thank you for having us. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Be safe. Where will